Uh, today, I'm joined by our CEO of Virtual Assist USA, Danielle Cuomo, and we are looking forward to spending the next half hour or so with you uh, to go over next steps that you can take to ensure uh, working remotely is, is truly benefiting you and your company. So I just want to tell you a little bit about us. Um, we've been leading um, this charge for about 12 years in the virtual remote workspace. We want to be as helpful as we can to you uh, here. While our virtual assist team is used to this daily variety um, of working remotely, a lot of you aren't. Um, our intention for this webinar is to be proactive during this challenging time and especially help individuals and teams who may be working remotely for the first time. We're really committed to um, providing you with ongoing support, offering our knowledge and being a resource to those uh, who are navigating these waters um, you know, for this first time. We also want to try and remind you of the many reasons why companies do turn to a virtual assistant team uh, in a crisis like this. There are many reasons, including flexibility, no long-term commitments, immediate ramp-up times, on-demand service, um, things like this. We also want to talk to you a little bit about how a virtual assist team can help you maintain your business as usual so things aren't interrupted, especially in these unusual circumstances. So I want to just quickly go through our agenda. Um, we're going to talk about a variety of things. Um, some of the topics will focus on the most effective ways to manage your team remotely how to monitor your remote employees, um, how to team build, right? It's still really important um, to foster this type of culture, even though we are working remotely and not able to just pop into the cubicle next to us or the office next to us and say hi. We wanna talk about the fundamentals of structuring your business virtually and how you can continue to grow your revenue. We'll also discuss most critical success factors in being successful while working remotely how to effectively communicate with your clients and customers, and why remote work may be beneficial for you in the future. We'll wrap up by talking about some statistics on, on remote work um, and how we can make things in this situation a little bit more manageable for you. There is a <clears throat> open Q&A at the end, so please feel free to put your questions in the chat feature that Zoom offers um, at any time. And at the end, we will answer them for you. Uh, so let me start by talking a little bit about managing that remote team. It can often be a challenge um, managing any team. Uh, and this challenge naturally grows as your team grows. It seems reasonable that if you're a manager of say five, you can easily do that remotely or seemingly easily do it remotely. But what happens when you're overseeing a team of 25? And now what happens when the world we're living in today, 90% of companies have to convert their team completely remotely. I think managing a team is a no easy feat either way, um, but especially one that you cannot physically see. You may not think, like I said, that team building matters in a remote space, but it's truly important to continue your company culture, whether it's in person or online while still putting important virtual policies for your, your team to follow in place. These conditions will help set a tone that will, will seamlessly flow through your, your company. I'm going to start with just discussing a few things on how to start managing a remote team. Many of you may be lost in not knowing, where, where do I go from here? How do I even kickstart this? So start by working hours. Typically, working in an office, you can pop in and out of the cubicle or office and say, good morning, I see that Joe or Susie is here and they're ready to work. Working remotely, it's a challenge. You can't just see them that they're there. Being a manager, how do you ensure that your team is actually at work and doing work? It's important to set clear rules. Be firm on employees clocking in and out, whether if this is via a time clock, a chat feature, a quick video message. Um, make sure you as the manager are aware when your employees are at work, taking a lunch break or leaving for the day. 
working remotely often leads to having flexible hours. This can often create a runway effect with your team. It's important to set firm and clear boundaries on what you expect for flex hours. You also need to make sure you know, <coughs> excuse me, when uh, your employees are there due to workman's comp purposes. <coughs> it's the effect that your office can have <coughs> and uh, you need to know whether they're there or not. Um, we know that you can't see them, but uh, you really need to know if something happened and they were actually at work and working or if they were actually at home. So next I want to talk about um, communication. When managing a team, communication is always essential. If you're not communicating, then how are you a team? It is very hard to see tone and body language through an email or chat feature. And there are no water coolers or, or lunch environments uh, when working virtually. You need to create this space uh, where face-to-face -face meetings are part of your daily routine. Develop a group chat, a messaging system. Make sure you set up a communication platform. This will help with the clocking in and out. Like I said, it will provide a resource for your team to communicate throughout the day. Some specific tools that you can use here are Google Hangouts, et cetera. There are plenty of them. Um, most of them are free, uh, which is a great budget function for you. Let's talk a little bit about training. It's not only important to train your oncoming employees, but also to continually train your team. Even if you're remote, you need to be operating at your highest efficiency, and there's always room for improvements. Being a manager means you're also a great coach. Stay in touch and adapt and learn new technologies. Record trainings so that your team members can re-watch them. Um, even if you're not readily available for them to pop in your office and talk to you, it's an excellent way to decrease a waste time. Speaking of not wasting time, we also wanna talk about productivity. A large majority of people say that they have never been more productive when they've, than when they've worked remotely. I am, I am one of these people. I, I didn't know the capacity of work I could get done um, when it was just me at home, uh, setting a, a tight schedule and deadlines and really working through things. You must um, be sure to account for both good and bad distractions um, when working from home. And as a manager, I think it's important to review these distractions with your team and take them into account. Lastly, I wanna talk about transparency. You wanna be able to see what your employees are doing and have access to reviewing their work. It is truly key and building that trust can often be difficult when working at home. You can create not only a direct but a remote access to your employees computer um, ask to do video and screen shares with them. Um, there are some features that may take screenshots of their screen. You really want to bring transparency to the workplace when you're not in a physical workplace with your team. Make sure that your expectations are clear. You ensue professionalism and respect. It does not happen overnight, so make sure to realize that as the manager. It is truly earned. I'd like to now pass um, the microphone over to Danielle Cuomo and let her talk a little bit about uh, fundamentals um, for success. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, as Nicole said, my name is Danielle. And um, before we get started and in, in diving into the fundamentals in this slide here, I just wanted to, to say that um, I know these are challenging times. I started this business um, in 2008, which was smack in the middle of the financial crash of 2008. And um, I really believe that because of that, in, in challenging times, there is always, always opportunity. Um, I started this company in a recession, and I really believe that people can start and build their businesses during this pandemic. There are different ways to do that, um, but I'm really, really optimistic about that. Um, I think that, you know, it's not going to be easy, and people can 
complain about it or, um, you know, feel down about it. But I think the right thing to do is just to keep working to find ways to make things better. Um, I know that a lot of people might be struggling, but, um, and I know that people in 2008 struggled, but most of them got right back in the game and they're more successful today than they were in 2008. And I really believe um, that can happen. And I, I can assure you this will get better and, and we will get through it. So I just wanted to, to mention that. Uh, but I'll dive into the slide here. So these are sort of the fundamentals of working virtually. As Nicole mentioned, um, we've been doing this for 12 years, so we live this every day. Um, the first thing is to, to put teams in place. So as a manager or a business owner, you've got to have a team in place. Um, in our world, we sometimes call this fractional operations. That's something like what we do here. So that would be if it's something that is not in your genius zone, it's not in your wheelhouse, um, don't spend the time trying to figure it out, wasting all the time trying to learn it. Just give it to someone that is an expert in that field that knows how to do it. This goes for things like um, Facebook ads, uh, web design, bookkeeping, even things like um, complex scheduling, email triage. If that is not in your wheelhouse, um, put the teams in place and the, and the proper people to do it for you because your time is limited, um, whether you're in a pandemic or not really. And it's, it's really important just to make sure that, um, that you do have those teams in place and you have trustworthy, reliable people uh, that you can count on. Also, in, in a time like this, to review your finances. Um, moving virtual, moving remotely cuts costs in, in lots of areas. Um, as I said, you know, we've been remote for 12 years, and that's eliminated significant costs for us being out of office, and we've been able to pass those cost savings on to our clients. Um, there are a lot of free platforms that your team can use to communicate. Uh, there's a lot of free services as well. So you don't need to think about fancy or robust or expensive softwares to be able to work from home. There's a lot of free tools. Um, you can certainly reach out to us with any specific questions that you have. If you want to know um, a free conference calling app or um, a free email marketing, anything like that, please reach out to us and, and we'd be happy to just evaluate your need and, and give you some recommendations for some tools there that can cut costs. And Along the, the lines of cutting costs, um, virtual assistants are oftentimes a lot less expensive than employees. Um, you're not on the hook for things like um, taxes, insurance, workman's comp, unemployment, um, paid breaks, vacations, holidays. We take care of all that for you, and it's in an all-inclusive rate. Um, and so oftentimes, it's much easier for someone's budget. It's easier for them to scale up or scale back, and, uh, and that's where we step in. Um, team meetings and client updates. Obviously, these are going to still be important whether you're in a pandemic or not. Um, something that, that you can do that um, just can help build the culture and, again, keep you connected with your team or with your clients is plan the time to make sure that you're using a platform like Zoom where everyone can see each other's faces. Um, this can be Zoom or Google Hangouts, Google Meet. Um, it doesn't even have to be during a formal meeting. It can just be a coffee at lunchtime. I've seen people do happy hour, um, which I think is really fun. Uh, you can have a few fun questions to throw out to the group. It doesn't have to be so formal. Um, I would ask people what, where the first public place is that they're going when we're all allowed out again. Um, I know that my kids can't wait to go to the library and the museum and just kind of a fun thing to, to talk about. Um, and then finally, communication. So as Nicole mentioned, telecommuting policies and procedures are really important for your team to understand um, when working remotely. It is not um, a free-for-all. Uh, it, it is not a replacement for a job. Um, it does not mean that you can sit on the couch all day and watch TV. Um, you have to be working, you have to show up at the right time, you know, be prompt for meetings, um, dress professionally for, uh, for video chats. Um, it doesn't replace um, all of those sort of decorum things that you would have in the office. Um, and so those, those things are just really important to, um, to make sure that happen. Um, and then I'd like to talk about how to communicate. So, Use all the channels available to you. It does not just have to be phone. 
definitely use video chat. We're a big fan of using video chat here. We use it very often for our team meetings and reviews and just connection calls. Um, it just really gives the opportunity to connect face to face with someone. Um, you can send pictures to your team, whether like text or email, of your remote workspace. Um, we share a lot of pictures of pets on our team um, and things like that can, can always be fun to do. But don't forget to, um, you can still text and, and email, um, FaceTime, just use all those available communication channels so you still get that voice to voice or face to face connection. Um, when we work with our clients in our virtual assistant business, I always recommend that the client and the VA set up a regular cadence for meeting. Um, this is just a, you know, a phone call, a video call. I generally say once a week, gives that time for the connection. Even if in your regular business, um, your brick and mortar business, if you're not setting up those meetings, obviously you're not, you know, intentional about it because you're seeing someone each day. But it's really important um, in the virtual or remote workspace to think about that and make a meeting, make it a regular one, um, set the same time every week, and just have that opportunity just to connect it. It really will do wonders for, um, for the relationship. And I would say the same thing with your clients too. If your clients are used to speaking with you on person or in a whim, um, stopping in, make sure that, that they know you're still there. So video chat, routine phone calls, all of those things, uh, keep them in the know. Um, next, I would just like to talk about um, the reason why we think remote working is, is really beneficial for the future. Um, the statistics are really in our favor on remote work. Um, as Nicole mentioned, she felt that her productivity really improved, and that was just sort of a you know personal anecdotal um, story. But the statistics actually support that. Um, there was a, a recent study in um, done by a Stanford economics professor that professor that said that there was a thirteen more thirteen percent uh, increase in employees being more productive when they work from home. There's limited distractions. Uh, there's no commute. Again, they might even just feel like it's a benefit or, or a perk. And I think, you know, 13% is a huge increase. Um, that's something that I would really look at. And I think that a lot of companies will be looking at in the future. Um, once we get beyond this pandemic, um, you know, in the years to come, I think this is going to be something that, that we see. So I would, you know, saddle up and, and get ready for it. Um, I think that you know, when people realize how completely doable a uh, remote workforce can be, um, I think they'll consider integrating work, remote workforce a lot more. Um, you know, when, when your team is, is virtual like us, um, there are no interruptions in your business operations. Uh, and so that's something that I think is important to to think about as well. Um, many of us were interrupted, it was abrupt, it felt like it kind of came out of nowhere and people were scrambling to, to go remote. Um, but we've had you know, no interruptions in our business experience, um, our business operations. Um, I do think there's a lot of other benefits, of course, to working with a virtual assistant remotely. Um, again, unlike a regular employee, you aren't on the hook for managing unemployment insurance, sick days, breaks, insurance, vacation, you know, we take care of all of that for you. And so that's definitely gonna be something that we expect to, to ramp up in the future and that we expect um, more inquiries and, and more folks going in that direction, especially because it's a really flexible and nimble option for folks. And as I said, they can ramp up and, and scale back as needed. And I think that's going to be um, certainly needed in these times. Um, but again, before I, I pass this uh, back over to Nicole, I was mentioning before that, you know, I did start this business in the recession. And I, but I do think that these types of trying times can teach us a lot of valuable lessons um, about our priorities, about our growth, about our business, about our relationships. Um, I, I can really assure you that it, it will get better. Um, and, and I would encourage you to keep finding ways to, to work to make things better. Um, keep finding ways to pivot in your business and change your offerings. Um, the world is still going on. The economy is still going on. Um, and it's something that we, you know, we need everyone to, to pitch in and, and keep moving. Um, but with that said, I will pass this back over to Nicole. Thank you, Danielle. Uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. I think now is a great time as well to um, reassess 
your business, reassess your strategies and how you can become more efficient now and, and more efficient in the future um, and more agile in that way. Um, thanks for, for joining our webinar today. Um, I want to just some contact information to get in touch with us in case you up with further details or you have further questions um, that may need a little bit more elaboration than just putting in the chat feature. <clears throat> so I hope you found uh, the webinar insightful and uh, hopefully eye-opening. Mm, let me uh, open up the floor to answer um, a few questions that you may have. Uh, let me see. Okay, Lisa has a question. Thanks, Lisa, for uh, joining us today. Her question is, what do you feel is the number one tool when working remotely? This is a tough one, I think, for me to answer. I would have to say um, making sure that I have a platform that is uniform to my team. I think that that's essential. Um, that everyone knows where everything is housed. Um, all team members know how to look for the information and, and um, get their answer, other questions answered in the same space. I would second this by saying the next tool is definitely a communication um, platform and strategy as working remotely can be difficult. Um, an abundance of communication is, is a true necessity. Um, so yeah, I would say that that platform Form that everyone knows to go to. Everyone knows that they can look for, um, you know, maybe documents or policies, procedures, um, you know, a sharing capability is, is there for them. Um, this can even be, you know, a platform such as Teamwork or maybe just something as simple as Google Drive that everyone um, shares that's nicely organized. I know ours is color co uh, coordinated um, and filed uh, very, very neatly and organized. Um, I think that there are uh, definitely free ones out there um, that you can utilize in a big way. Uh, that was a great question, Lisa. Thank you. Um, another question by George. Uh, hi, George. Uh, George is asking, I'm trying to take my team 100% remote to the new, due to the new laws, <clears throat> but I'm having trouble. What is the first step I should take? <clears throat> hi, George. Um, well, I think that the first step is to know if, if all your employees know how to access their work from home. I think you may be surprised how many people already know their passwords, already know how to sign on from home. Uh, so my first step for you would be to talk to your employees, get their advice, um, see what they know how to do, and, and if they have any input, uh, they know your business, or they should know your business um, inside and out and their role inside and out. Um, what will work for them remotely and what, what do they need a little extra boost on? Um, I think that would be a great first step for you. Uh, thank you for your question, George. I think a lot of people are struggling right now as they're trying to adapt to to this uh, virtual space, and, and they are saying, "Oh no, like what, what now?" Right. So definitely talk to your team; uh, they will be a great re resource for you. I think that's all uh, the questions that we have. Um, thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope again that you you found our